Good evening. Good evening. Deacon Dan was able to help me out at the four, but Deacon Richard's back went out really bad this week, so keep him in your prayers. So uh, I'll be alone to, uh, tonight up here. But keep him in your prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience its effects in our lives and the effects of your redemption, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test my affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then he fed you manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but every word comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with the Sarah serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, and fed you, with, fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song is Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has stressed your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly ruins his word. Praise, Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He has proclaimed the word of Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has made known to them. Alleluia. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessings that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not the participation of the body of Christ. 
because of the loaf of bread as one, we, through many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews <clears throat> quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will, I will raise him on the final day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the true bread that came down from heaven. Under, <clears throat> unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've all enjoyed another awesome week in our beautiful paradise. And as most of you know, if you were here last week, uh, I spent this week on retreat in Alhambra, California, at Sacred Heart Retreat House with all the priests of our Archdiocese of Las Vegas. It's a yearly event, and we've been going back to this retreat house for the past three years. When I left on my way there on Sunday night, uh, I got a text message from one of our parishioners, and this is the text message. Have a safe trip and behave. <laughs> if Father John is there, it could be a problem. Father John was there and we did have a good time together. We did not put our rooms together this year. We were in separate buildings even, but we did get to sit together uh, for the events. Retreat's always a good opportunity uh, for the priests of our archdiocese to be together. Most of us are kind of far away. My nearest neighbor in our diocese is 90 miles away in Boulder City at St. Andrews. So it's kind of nice when we have this opportunity to get together. Couple of little problems. For the past two years, I've lucked out and gotten a double bed. This year I got one of the twin beds. I toss at night, and when you toss in a twin bed, the second toss puts you with your arm on the floor. So it was kind of exciting every night. I never knew where exactly I would wake up. The temperatures were in the 50s in Alhambra. It warmed up to the 60s, maybe to 70, but that was about it. And it was very cloudy and very damp. The only day we had sun was Thursday. That was kind of unusual. Normally there's flocks of green parrots all around and they squawk at night. For some reason the parrots left, but the sisters told us that there's a family of skunks that's taken up residence on the property and we should be careful. And so I walked around, I never saw a, a single skunk, so I was happy about that. We had a free afternoon on Wednesday, and I went out with Eddie and Andy. Now, Andy has become a vegan because his girlfriend is vegan, so we had to go to an outdoor vegan restaurant in California. I had what they called a grilled cheese sandwich, but because it was vegan, there's no cheese. It might have been grilled, 
but I'm not sure what was inside of it. And it fell apart. Whatever it was did not have the consistency of cheese. But four of us ate. We basically had sandwiches, nachos, a glass of wine one person had. The rest of us had iced tea or water. It was lunch. And the bill was $220. That's another reason why I won't become a vegan uh, and that it's too expensive over there. And then I had another afternoon where I had a two hour block free and I went out to see Mater Dolorosa Retreat House. It's uh, I believe in Sierra Madre, California or very near there. Beautiful piece of property. It's run by the Passionist Fathers. And we were told we should see it because there was a coach named Woody Hayes who coached for Ohio State. And they said whenever he brought his team to LA, instead of staying at a hotel, he would make them stay at Mater Dolorosa Retreat House so that they wouldn't get in trouble before the game. So I wanted to go up and see this. So we got to see it. And it's owned by the Passionist Fathers. And the Passionist Fathers have a very distinctive habit, if you're familiar with it. It's a kind of a light colored with a, a heart with a cross on it. And I'm walking around and I run into this guy wearing the Passionist habit. And I said, oh, hi, how are you? You know, I said, I'm Father Charlie from Laughlin. Who are you? Well, it turned out to be the Superior General of the Passionist Fathers <laughs> worldwide who was visiting over there. Now he knows a little bit about Laughlin. <laughs> and I finally got to the mission. San Gabriel Mission is right next to where we have our retreat. And I have been trying for three years now to get to see the mission. Because when Father Garces was here in 1776, he had walked from Tucson to Laughlin, or it wasn't Laughlin, but the area here, and on March 4th, 1776, Father Garces set out from what is now Laughlin and walked 20 days to the San Gabriel Mission. And there he met up with Father Yunipera Serra, the great apostle to California. And the two of them spent a week together at San Gabriel Mission. So I was determined I wanted to see it. Well, I couldn't go three years ago because they had had this terrible fire and it destroyed the roof of the mission. No one was allowed in. So last year we went, well, they still hadn't completed the repairs from the fire, so no one was allowed in. So this year I was sure I was gonna go. So on Monday when I was heading for the retreat, I said, let's stop at San Gabriel Mission and we'll see it now. It's closed on Mondays. <laughs> Our free day was Wednesday afternoon. I said, good, I'll get Eddie and Andy to take me. Before we go to lunch, we'll go to the mission. It's closed on Wednesdays. Well, I had one more opportunity when I was out on Thursday afternoon. I said, all right, we're gonna go. We got to the mission and the door was locked. They were having a private tour. <laughs> So I went into the gift shop and I literally begged the girl in the gift shop. I said, look, I'm from Nevada. I'm miles and my hours away from here. I have been trying to do this for three years. And I told her the story of Father Garces and she said, well, you can go in, but you can't disturb. I, can't, I, won't, I won't even talk to the tour. I won't, but they won't even know I'm here. Just let me in. So she did, so I got to see the mission finally, and it is absolutely beautiful. If you're ever in that area of San Gabriel, Alhambra, Pasadena, California, San Gabriel Mission is absolutely beautiful to see. Now, the retreat was interesting. I have trouble listening to someone else preach. Uh, it's just one of those internal things. But the, pre the priest who preached was pretty good. He was from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and he gave three talks every day. So we had the three talks, we had three meals, we had two prayer sessions and a mass every day for the, for the week of the retreat. And the talks were good, <clears throat> especially in the fact that he didn't talk too long. He would say what he had to say, and, and then he would stop. So you, you would end up with a little bit of free time in there. 
And there were three things that I, take, I brought back from the retreat that I figured I wanted to share with all of you. They were that worthwhile. And so this is the, the fruits, if you will, uh, of that retreat this week. First thing is, he mentioned a statistic, in fact, he opened the retreat with this statistic, that 28% of all Roman Catholics do not really believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, at Mass, or in the Tabernacle. 28% do, I'm sorry, only 28% do believe it, forgive me. It's, so it's the bulk of Catholics that do not believe it. And I listened to that statistic, and that was awful. If you think of it, that, you know, it's one of the great mysteries, great doctrines of our Catholic faith, that Jesus is really present in the form of bread and wine on the altar at Mass, really present in the host that we keep in the tabernacle. That's why we have such great respect for it. Only 20% of Catholics, they surveyed the country, believe that that's true. So that was the first reason for making the retreat topic uh, Eucharistic renewal. And so we're gonna have to work on that during the year. I, I, was, I was saddened by that statistic to hear that, that we had fallen to, to such a low level, especially about something so important. And then the, the second thing that we, we made a point of was that there are requirements for communion. And I know that's something that's not much talked about, but it's important and maybe it has something to do with that statistic. Uh, first, of course, you have to be Catholic and, and be, be trained in our Catholic faith. Uh, you have to attend Mass regularly, not just show up sometimes and expect that you're allowed to receive communion. If you're married, your marriage has to be approved by the Catholic Church, otherwise you can't receive communion. If you're single, you have to be living as a single person following the laws of the church, otherwise you can't receive communion. If you don't believe in the teachings of the church, you can't receive communion. Those are all important things. A little bit lesser of importance, but somewhat important still, most of us are old enough to remember that it used to be you could not eat or drink anything from midnight before you would receive communion. That's been shortened, it went to three hours, now it's down to one hour before communion. You have to have at least that much respect for this being a special food that for one hour before you receive communion, you don't eat or drink anything else. The exception is water or medicine. Though you need to take medicine or if you need water, that's always allowable. But I'd like to point out that beer and coffee and wine are not medically necessary <laughs> at, at any point. We sometimes see that at the Riverside when people come in remind you, you know, of that. The third point that was made, every talk, and there were three talks a day, the priest would end the talk by giving us three questions to think about. Just, he said, just think about these as you go about the rest of your day. And so we would. There was one of those questions, now remember, there were three talks a day, three questions at every talk, so there were nine questions every day from Monday uh, through Friday. Uh, the one question that really got me, and I really liked it, uh, was on Thursday uh, that he had. And the question was, if you became a saint, what would you be the patron of? If you became a saint, what would people pray to you for, remember you as being connected with, remember you as being the example to want to follow? I thought that was an excellent question. And when I thought about it, all I could remember was, you might remember Mother Angelica, and when she would be talking, she would say, I don't care what you have after your name, PhD or MA or BA, doesn't mean a darn thing. What I want is those letters in front of my name, S-T. That's the ones that mean something. I think that's a good reminder. Maybe it's, maybe it's connected with the, the Eucharist as being one of the sources and helps to get us there. 
and our group, our reverence for the Eucharist, our care in receiving it, our following of the rules in receiving it, are part of the process of us becoming saints. So we pray for that tonight, that we would become those saints that God wants us to be, and that His Holy Eucharist would help us to do so. God bless you. We stand together for the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, right from right, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great hope and great trust, we bring our prayers to God, our loving Father. We pray for our church and those who teach us God's truths. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women in our military forces, for those Christians who are still persecuted. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all those who are sick in mind or body, all those who need our prayers this week because of their illnesses, all those on our parish prayer list, we ask your prayers for David Chitkowskis, Bonnie Bly, and Deacon Richard in particular. We pray to the Lord. Lord and among those who have died, we ask your prayers for Helen Gelhouse. We pray to the Lord. Lord and special attention to this Mass is from Michael John Doherty. We pray to the Lord. Lord and Almighty God, we give you thanks for all the blessings you've already shared with us and for all those you have in store for us in the future. Keep us close to you today and throughout our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, <clears throat> whose, uh, whose signs are the mysteries that we celebrate together through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. 
For he is the true and the eternal priest who instituted the, the pattern of the art, the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, communicating, uh, commanding us to do so and to make this offering in his memory. As we eat his flesh, which he sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood, which was poured out for us, he we are made and washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Who are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you indeed of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her together in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the power of the Lord and the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are watching the Mass online because they're unable to attend Mass in person uh, to f follow along with Larry on the prayer for spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come and least spiritually into my heart, into my soul, and into my body. I embrace you as if you were already here, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to separate from you. Amen. Amen. I remind you all to please take home a copy of our parish bulletin. You'll find on the back page the form for the Father's Day Novena, which begins next Sunday, a week from tomorrow. So if there's anybody, a male, you'd like to remember, a father, godfather, grandfather, uh, special uncle, about uh, male relative or friend to be remembered in that novena, please fill out the form, return it to the church office uh, before next weekend so we can have it on the altar. Please stand and let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity 
in the, in the sharing of your divine life, which is memorialized in these gifts which we present before you tonight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.